yourself, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so Leonardo said, I don't need a year. Right. And he said, well, Pope said, what do you need? He said, I just need a, a, a pencil and, and some paper. Yes. And he took the pencil and paper and he drew a perfect circle. Yeah. yeah. And he said, find me an artist that can, can do, do that. that. Yeah. In the same way that I feel that you could make a re-edition Speedmaster very simple. Yes. But right. Yes. Yeah. Everybody. Hello, Wayne. Eh? Yeah, what a pleasure to see you here at your farm in uh, Surrey. It's my first time in Surrey, actually. Is it? It's lovely. Well, we brought the snow for you. <laughs> yeah, it's very picturesque. <laughs> I've got my big, uh, heavy coat, but I know we're about to get warm because we're going to take a look at some watches, and I'm sure I'm going to get uh, pretty overheated with excitement. Go good. <laughs> All right, let's go in. Fantastic. How have you been? Very well, thank you. You know, the funny yes. thing is, I actually didn't know that you're Mr. Speedmaster 101. Ah, uh, so yes. when we met, you know, briefly in Hong Kong earlier yes. this year, um, you know, it was extraordinary. I didn't realize it. Well, you know, clearly I knew a guy who, who was very serious about watches, which we'll tell the story about that later. But, uh, you know, I actually learned a lot about the watch, which I actually purchased from you, <laughs> from your own website. Well, I'm glad it was helpful. <laughs> it I'm was, glad it was helpful. It was it's really just a bit of fun. We turned the alarm off. Oh, good. <laughs> and uh, the guard dogs are at bay, I take it? They are. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> this is the 1988 Aston Martin Zagato. This but, one is a Vantage Volante. Yeah, well, because I was, I was going to say, I'd seen these cars before, but um, I, you know, I always remember the, the trademark to the Zagatos where they had the double bubble sort of roof. Um, but this is, I didn't even know they made convertibles of this. Yeah. They did. They made 37. Victor Gauntlet promised the coupe owners he wouldn't make any more coupes. Right. He didn't promise that he wouldn't make any convertibles. Smart guy. So, <laughs> so he made Incredible. 37 convertibles. Oh, that's yeah. my first car. Yeah. I, I must have built three or four times. The reason it looks like this now is because uh, my best friend and I crashed. Oh. And uh, I destroyed it, actually. And wow. I rebuilt it. And I rebuilt it into a race car. So tell us a little bit about, uh, so we know that your collection is a, a focus between 59 and uh, 78. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got into Speedmasters to begin with. Uh, it was it was a man I, I do a lot of work with. We were walking around, actually we were in Geneva. I never liked watches and he said, but look at this watch. It's, 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 it's the only thing that remained working on the, on the spaceship. Yes. And he told me the story. And I won't tell the story now because it's well known. But, the, um, the Apollo 13 story. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I just thought, Oh, that's fantastic. And then I started looking around and I, I, I bought a watch and the first watch I bought, it's, it was the chocolate dial, uh, the very nice chocolate one. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about this piece. And, and so it's interesting that you went immediately to something that had some patina to it. It's you know? true. In fact, it, it, it was from a very nice uh, French shop, very knowledgeable, guided me through some speed. I mean, yes. I said to him, I don't know anything about these right. at all. In that case, he says, the one you want <laughs> is this one. How nice. And I <laughs> said, well, why is that? Yes. And, and, and everything he said made sense. I subsequently discovered that um, it's always in the serial range 2911. Oh, I see. Uh, that you get this particularly special brown. You get browns in other serials. Uh, one of them is 2960. Right. Uh, but this particular kind of swirly brown that yeah. I like, yes. you only get it in this. In, in the reference 145.022. Yes. That's the you brown. get a different kind of brown yes. in other brown dials. Yes. But this particular sort of, I call it a galaxy chocolate. It's, it's like, stunning. It's like a, a dark, sort of dark chocolate. Yes. Almost, and yeah. if you turn over a bar of galaxy, you get that kind oh, of fantastic. nice look Amazing. to it. So yes. this, was, this was the first one that That's got the you, first one. brought you on the journey. Yes. Very interesting. The, the 2915s, these four are all yes. 2915s. They're worth so much money. Right. And so little is known about them. Really? How interesting. That you cannot be sure of what you're buying. The main thing that, that we all are concerned about is the steel bezel, the right. base 1000 steel bezel. The watch that started it all then. That's the watch that started it all. Right. It was the racing driver's watch. Yes. It was never intended to be anything other than a racing driver's watch. Yes. So for you, what are the things that you look for when you're, you're looking for a perfect, you know, CK2915? What's important to me is uh, the first thing I look for, look at is the bezel. Right. But it doesn't stop me going further because the bezel, there is a, there, there's a reproduction bezel made in Germany. Right. What I tend to do is value them as though they're reproduction. Really? How mm. interesting. Because, you see, here is one that has been authenticated, supposedly. Right. Um, now, is that a reproduction bezel? I'm assured by 
Christie's because it's still on the label <laughs> that it's not. That it's not, right. Um, and they ran all their watches past the Amiga Museum, they right. said. Yes. And the bezel is identical to that, which right. is a reproduction bezel. How extraordinary. I bought my two 915s before the prices went so high that you really had to care whether yes. or not it was a, a genuine spe uh, steel bezel. Of course. Even with uh, the doubt on the bezels, and by the way, you can also have doubt on the hands. Of course. Uh, they're worth a fortune. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they're, they're all worth over 100,000 now, I think. Yes. Well, you've just got to see this yeah, one. Yeah, I was just looking at that one. That, that Tropical 2915 is extraordinary. I have all the papers for that one. Really? Too. Yeah, that one. That's probably the most beautiful 2915 I've ever seen. I, I yeah. think it is. Yes. It's a Dash 3, and uh, it's, the tile is just such a beautiful color. Incredible. And it's interesting that this, this, the, these dials, when they went tropical, they went to sort of a lighter, sort of milk chocolate kind of uh, a color. There are people that are trying to replicate this, and yes. they're using motor car plastic weathering machines. Right. But you can't do it. You, it just, you, because the weathering destroys the plots to such an extent, yes. it's, it becomes quite obvious. Yeah. That's a beautiful watch as well. Isn't it? And it's a pulsation meter as well. It is. Quite, it is. Doctor's area. watch. For me, I don't find the pulsations bezel the most attractive Amiga bezel, but yeah. it was what was on the watch. And yes. Where possible, I like to keep things as original as possible. So, and, and this is a, an interesting watch. It's a sleeper. Sleepers are the expression that, you know, after 35 years of going to auctions, yes. my, my job was to go to the auctions uh, each season and find the sleepers. Right. And, and each auction will have one or two right. lots that everyone misses. Yes. I've carried this over into my private life. Yes. It's a fairly mundane looking, slightly worn, uh, 105002. Right. The 002 being very rare, it was yes. made for six months. Fantastic. Essentially a 2998, but with a new numbering system. Yes. This was in, a, I think, a Christie's sale. And um, I hadn't viewed the sale. I was buying a different watch in the sale. But this came up while I was watching the sale. It's a 105, and it was an FAP with an extract. So Wow. Um, the FAP is indistinct. You can yeah. only just see it. Yeah. I'm very pleased to have bought that because yeah. uh, you know, I would never go out and hunt for one. Yes. But because it happened to be an FAP, I'm pleased. Mm. So, well, you, but you're quite a big fan of, of these, what people call the sort of transitional straight, uh, straight case wa uh, lugged watches, is that correct? The straight yeah. lug watches, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. I am. I, 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 uh, I like them very much. They call this the Ed White, so the, yep. the, the straight lug Ed White, and that is just a very high quality watch. Yes. It's, it's so unusual to find high quality Speedmasters because we were talking earlier that most people tend to put them to use mm -hmm. rather than put them away yes and so uh yeah we were having this conversation because it's, it's yeah. somehow it's, it's it's actually quite normal to find immaculate rolexes because apparently no one ever used them <laughs> i think could it be that there were a lot more rolexes made perhaps the moonwatch only people came up with a figure of one hundred and twenty thousand three to one movements made mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. were put in seamaster so that's not a very big number no, in at all. global yes. sales now uh, amiga in the 60s they sort of, they messed around a little bit. They sure. had a bit of fun. Sure. And so there is a watch. Oh, wow. Uh, there are 10 wow. known, I've seen less than 10 of these. Wow. This so metallic I, dial. Look at that, the dial color on that watch. Every time I've asked for an extract on a blue dial. Yes. It comes back black. Really? Mm. They don't acknowledge that, it's a blue that it was an issued model. But there are this batch of watches yes. that pop up every now and then. I've seen, as I said, about, I think it's, it's eight, incredible. maybe? It's incredible. The it's more incredible. you see it, the more you like it. That's such a stunning watch. You talked to me about reissues. If they were going to reissue it, yes. and they just did that, yes. that would be amazing. Be but what, cool. what they mustn't do is put uh, Super Luminova on. Right. Because it would kill it. Yes, that, just that really it. bright glow just yeah. doesn't work, you know. Yeah. Nowadays, these sell for a lot, but yes. this was the first one that came up for public auction. Right. And no one knew what it was. Really? And do you remember uh, what you paid for it back then? Oh, I do. I yes. do. I do. I, I know exactly what I paid for it. I, <laughs> may we ask? Uh, I think I paid £25,000. And uh, the last one uh, sold for uh, over eighty. Wow. Another rare dial. I don't know if you can see in the light. It's a gray it's a dial. Matte gray dial. It's incredible. Uh, now we get into the, uh, the, the real genuine space yes. watches. This is a, a 105012, mm -hmm. but it's a 63. Right. Now, if you go looking for a 63, they're not very easy to find. Yes. Um, 
if you look, you've got the, the Swiss made with no T marks. Ah, right. Uh, this has a, a, but it's got a professional dial. Mm -hmm. This so has just... the case that protects the lugs, yeah. uh, the, the pushers. I love this watch, actually. It's got such a, an attractive look to it. It's, There's something uh, super pragmatic about it at the same time. Right? <laughs> very, very heroic, you know? <laughs> if yeah. you say, yeah. I die, I so. you're a deeper man than me. <laughs> Well, that's, that's kind of the birth of, of what we perceive today to be the iconic moon watch, is right? Indeed yeah. it is, yeah. yes. The, one, the, the 105012 is, yes. uh, is the one that they put into sort of heavy service, yes. as it were. Yes. And then we have a nice a tropical dial, 105012. One of the things you have to watch with the 012s uh, is the fat necks on the pushers. So they've got these mushroom-shaped pushers. They're yes. slightly shorter. Yes. And so you, what you what you want to make sure is that you've got the fat neck ones and not the skinny neck ones. I mean, if you really want to see, that's a skinny neck one. Yeah. And uh, that's the service pusher that if oh, you send I it see. to Am Amiga. Yes. So it's the stem of the pusher the is much The stem of the thicker, pusher yes. is much thicker and it makes for a much more attractive Yeah. yeah well, I would imagine you'd have a, a gap there as well if you've mm. got the, the, the service pusher. Uh, that's really cool. Now, this is the, uh, interesting because it's a pair of 66s. For some uh, reason that Amigos failed to tell us, so, <laughs> um, uh, they had two case manufacturers for the 66. Incredible. That one is the HF case, right? which <laughs> I'm ashamed to say I can now spot across a room yeah. oh, wow. from the shape <laughs> of the lugs. Yes, there's a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. And you can see the facet lines yes. uh, on the CB case. And what is HF and uh, CB uh, represent? Well, uh, you're going to embarrass my French accent, Hugues Frere okay. yeah, and uh, Central Boite. So Central Boite and Hugo and Frère, right? And, and yeah, I mean, it's almost a completely different shape, isn't it? So this one is, um, so it's got- the famous Ultraman. There was a Japanese TV show in it. Uh, the, ja the, the producer of it was a watch uh, fanatic and had yes. a lot of watches in the show. Yes. And after considerable research, right. it has been discovered that Amiga made 50 of these watches. Yes. A uh, very specific serial range, right. and they they had a uh, supposedly a slightly different dial, yes. as well as a orange hand. Yes. What happened was I sent off for the extracts, and they wrote back and said, "This is an Ultraman." Well, at the time, it looked like this. Yes. And so I thought, I've got an Ultraman. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> I uh, immediately whipped off uh, the hand, which right. wasn't a good one anyway, yes. and put on this orange hand. Yes. But this orange hand, of course, although it's an Amiga hand, is yes. a millimeter too short. Right. So another sort of nerdy thing is yes. that I now want an Ultraman with a long, ha long orange hand. Right. Right. Um, but here, uh -huh. here is, a, is another one. Yes. Now we talk about Patna. This. That's amazing. <laughs> this is about a, a, a <laughs> tropical Ultraman, from what I can see. <laughs> it, this again, it's Ultraman only because right. it has the extract that says it's an Ultraman. It's it had the specification of orange hand when right. it left. Yes. yes. But this is a truly uh, uh, shagged watch. Right. Uh, one that I'm very, very fond of and wear I quite love it. often. I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. So these Ultramans are, are currently, the people who own them are very, very excited about them and talking them up. <laughs> I would like to see one. In a in an open auction. Yes, I would like yes. to see one um, offered yeah. and and see what people really right. think of them. What do you, what do you think? Omega should uh, do a r r new new release of Ultramans. What do you think? Well, uh, the rumor on the forum is that they're going to do it, and if yeah. they do it, I hope they do it in such a way that it 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 looks a little vintage. Uh, right. Which I think they can do. They they managed to do a good job on the, so the three. The yes, they did. Fantastic job on yeah, that watch. They did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Isn't that it? is stunning. Yeah. How it got there, I like that, I do not know. I do not know. I bought that sight unseen. Sight uh, unseen? Sight unseen from a, a, a dealer in Portugal. Yes. Um, I think he would have taken it back had it not. But I, I said to him, the only thing I want is a brown dial. I said, I've got the perfect one. I've got the perfect one. I'll send it to you. Amazing. But you know, also, I mean, it's interesting because we live now in an age that's so modern, so contemporary that people are now, you know, the majority of people are meeting their spouses through the internet, you know, through apps, right? And, and yet at the same time, we have such a reverence for things that, um, that, that glorify aging and, and patina and the past. That's lucky for us, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> in particular for me, but yes. So now we go into the 86. Six ones. Right. And the 861s are a different league financially. They're much cheaper. So 861s are also, this is when they changed the movement to using um, a cam instead of a column wheel. Is yes, that correct? Yes. That is absolutely right. Yes. Now, this uh, it visually looks like a 145012. Right. It looks exactly like these here. Yes. Um, because it has the long indices dial. Right. But it's not. It's an 861. Right. It's, it's one of the most practical uh, uh, Speedmasters to own, very unusual. Yes. 
Um, very hard to find. Yes. Very. Um, is it really? Mm. Yeah. You can't find them because made only in a short time. Right. This is a... This one you can see all the, the, the uh, tarnishing. It's been sat in a box for many, many years. The, the oh, guy wow. told me it was never worn. Yeah. It's a full length bracelet. That. Wow. Now these have to be adjusted by a jeweler. Yes, yes, we... Mm. we and you've discovered it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, so tell us a little bit about the specific watch. You know? Well, this specific watch is, is one of the benefits, the unintentional benefits of having my website is that occasionally uh, a private owner will uh, talk to me about selling it. And honestly, I, I tell them, if you've got the time and the patience and it's a really good watch, you should give it to one of the big auction houses yes. and this is what you should do. Right. And invariably a relationship builds uh, where they say, well, actually, we'd like to sell it to you. Right. Some of them. Yes. And, uh, and I say, well, I'll do my best to give you the fairest price. If it's worth buying from a private person, it's because it has the qualities that I admire, as in it has the full history, the, right. the full yes. uh, uh, track record. And this yes. one, this one uh, I bought from the nephew uh, of, a, of an old lady who had, I'm not quite sure that it had gone from her brother to... Uh, brother owned it and he'd given it to her right. and and then she'd kept it for many many years yes. and uh, and the nice thing is you know we sat uh, meeting in a in a print convention this guy was a print paper salesman or something and Fantastic. he he it was the most valuable thing he'd carried around he's really nervous about it right and i said to him i said i don't know how i'm going to buy this from you i mean i'd like to buy it yes. and i'd like to give you the money for it i said obviously i don't carry that sort of money here yes. so what i did was i pulled out my ipad yes. and i did an online transfer in front of him oh wow i said there i've done the transfer yes. Would you like to take the watch and, yeah. and, uh, and when you're happy? Yes. Yeah. He said, no, take the watch. He said, I've seen, he said, he said I, I don't want the worry anymore. Wow. And, uh, Amazing. Well, you know, I, I told him who I was and where I am. Yes, you know. yes. One thing about having a website, it'd be a, it's a very long con if that's what I was going to do. It's <laughs> amazing. It's a very clean watch. Yeah. And, then, and then, of course, you get into the racing dial. Yes. I love the racing dials. I do too. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And as I said, this one was uh, serviced or restored, depending on how you look at it, by right. Amiga. Right. And we have the paperwork for it. Yes. And uh, the owner who had it serviced at Amiga sold it yes. to me. Yes. There's a wonderful story about how it actually got to me from all sorts of people, went through three hands. I call it the Amiga Forum Underground Railway. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Forgive my ignorance, um, William, but how do you um, ascertain if, if a watch came as a racing dial watch? Extract. Extract. Yeah. Okay. These, these, all, all the racing dials have extracts. Right. So this one, you can see it's been serviced. This is a, a, a watch that has not been serviced. Wow. And so this one, you can see the hands are different. So these are Mark II hands. Now, you often see Mark II okay. hands on Speedmasters. Ah, yes, they are Mark II hands. Mm. Yeah. And you yeah. think, why does Amiga do that? Right. The reason, I think, is that Amiga until recently have not, mm. I don't mean to, I'm not trying to be nasty in any way. I just, they, that wasn't their business to restore vintage watches. Yes. Their business was to return the watch and in as best a condition as they could make it. Yes. A best yes. performance. Yes. Yeah. So they would uh, put super lumen over hands on because yes. that would give yes. better performance. Of course. They would change the bezel from the beautiful vintage bezel to a modern bezel with all the, right. uh, the wrong serifs yes. and the wrong dots. Yes. But you know what's extraordinary about Omega, as opposed to, I guess it's the, the other big brand that we, we, we love as well, mm -hmm. is that you can go and get an extract from the archive. Oh, it's fantastic. Right? That's, imp that's incredible, because as it's a resource, fantastic. that puts uh, to rest any doubts. You know? It, it, it yeah. stops a lot of the monkey business that you yes. see in some of the other brands. Yes. So I'd like to tell a story about how we ended up meeting in person. Right? Yes, so, that'd be fun. Uh, I, was, I was a little bit demoralized, of course, um, and I went over to the Four Seasons across the street from the auctions and had a couple of drinks, and I was thinking, you know, okay, I, I, I've got some great contemporary Speedmasters, um, but I don't have anything vintage, and I, I'd love to have really one of the, the, for me, an iconic piece. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I, I had already started looking at um, the yellow gold uh, Speedmaster from 1969. I believe the, the reference is BA145.022, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I've, I've always liked yellow gold sports watches as well. I think, I mean, what I like about them is the sort of the contrast between something that was created to be extremely utilitarian, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's made in a precious metal. And there's some, also something about the yellow gold that was made in watches, used for watches from that era. It's a well. nice color. It's so beautiful. Mm. It's so beautiful. So I started to look around for one, but, it, you know, again, you know, a couple of years ago I could find them but for some reason 
in the last year or so, you just, you just can't. You know, it's impossible to find a brilliant guy who goes by the handle uh, CK2915. Um, and he said, well, I, you know, I happen to know someone because he's got more than one. And I said, well, you know, please, uh, please introduce us. So we, you know, through very briefly, I looked at the images of the watch. It was, you know, stunning. I mean, I couldn't believe the condition of this watch from 69, you know, until to me, it looks totally unmolested. Because they, they wear quite quickly. If they're worn, yes. they, they can wear quite yes. quickly. I mean, I don't think you'll wear it. But yes. I, uh, I'm, I'm very you, cautious yes. about my watches, exactly. So I said, listen, I'd love to get this watch. But then it became a question of, well, when are we going to meet, right? And I love the fact that uh, you were in Hong Kong and I was coming to Hong Kong, and you're not based in Hong Kong, right? And nor am I. And we were transitioning in such a way that we could meet at the Airport Express precisely with a 30 minute gap before when you had to leave and when I, had, I was arriving. And so we, you know, we met each other, we sat down. I remember I handed you um, an envelope of cash and I love the fact that I was like, um, so William, you know, I've just met you. <laughs> Don't you want to count the money? <laughs> to which you said, I said, are you going to rip me off? And you said no. And I said, okay, then I don't need to count it. So, and I, I like to think of that. That's kind of like where we became friends. Yes. You know? And, and uh, as the custodian of this watch, you know, it's, 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 it's a great honor. But then you said something really remarkable. You said, you know, if you'd come a couple of days later, um, I could have shown you a really interesting watch. And I think you said something along the lines of, have you ever seen an, an Alaska 3? And I was like, wait a second, because the last Alaska 3 I can think of was the watch that was sold at the Phillips auction last year, and he said, "Yeah, that's that's the watch I'm talking about." Yeah. So I didn't. Re I finally realized that you were the gentleman <laughs> that had had won that extraordinary watch, and very deservedly so. You know. Oh, I don't know about deservedly, but I just say it was it was a stroke of luck. So I mean, tell us a little bit about uh, you know. Well, I only know what I've been told, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that is that NASA made 58 watches. Yes. Uh, in cooperation with its American importer. Right. So as to satisfy the. Uh, executive order that stated that all government agencies must use American products. Right. I love how you've got the NASA Velcro as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is interesting because uh, the case is quite different. Right. The shape is, is quite different. Yes. Uh, it's understandably different in that if you were just going to make a Moonwatch case, why would you not make it like that? It's yes. probably a slightly simpler way of making it and they have their own manufacturing techniques. Yes. It has the radial dial. And this is one of uh, I'm not quite sure, and uh, there's different sources, is it four or six, we're not quite sure, Yes. of the second batch, right. the first batch being 58, yes. that were made, and um, these, the, the second batch were, I don't know, sold to the public, but yes. they weren't NASA prop yes. uh, property, property. So, so, so they yes. could be sold. For all I know, that it was the importer using up his stock of cases and sure. dials. Sure. Um, because we, we actually know of a case where uh, someone purchased a watch from an auction from the original batch that belonged to NASA. Well, no, the auction, yeah. the auction offered it. Yes. It wasn't actually sold. Yes. And before the auction, they got a visit from two very large men from the U.S. Embassy in London, right. telling them that yeah. hand it over. Right. <laughs> Apparently, they were very polite. A friend of mine was there. They were very polite, yes. and they had all the documents. Right. So, you know. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. I bet that watch cost them about fifty thousand yeah, dollars in legal sure, fees. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, congratulations, you know, William, I can't think of a better person to own this and, and I, you know not that not that I should have a say, but <laughs> I think I think that, that you are the perfect owner for this piece of history and, and it's been such a pleasure to spend time with you. Thank you so much, my friend. That's a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks.